If you have $10, you can join the Flat Earth Society. The Flat Earth Society is real. Its members have been busy deprogramming the masses for more than 450 years, since 1547. They're on a mission and they have a message. The Earth is flat. It's standing perfectly still. Scientific evidence to the contrary is convoluted, fabricated and logically flawed. The Flat Earth Society recognizes that the burden of proof lies with them, and they have it. Hello, Julie. Today my mother read an article about girls my age, 14, that say they are bisexual. Then she asked me, how do you know at that age? I say, you just know. She said, I hope you never become one of them. And I asked what she would do if I was. She said that she would pretend it was a phase. She also said it would break my father. How do I tell my parents now? I was thinking I would just wait until I'm older and I don't live in my house anymore. So that way, they wouldn't shun me and I won't be out on the street. Do you think this is a good ha choice? The Flat Earth Society maintains that Earth is the fixed center of the universe. Classical physicists theorized and concluded that ether was the ephemeral substance that permeated and suspended all matter, and they were right. Light travels through some medium, of course, ether. The speed of Earth can be calculated by emitting a light pulse and measuring how quickly it falls back in one direction. You can measure the speed of Earth by trying this experiment at home. Throw your do-rake out the window of a moving car and watch how quickly it flies back in your face. Take precautions in a no littering or profiling zone. If your do-rake doesn't come back, you can only conclude one thing. The Earth is standing still. Dear Miss Peters, it is beyond great that there's now young adult literature about positive gay characters. More than anything, I wished I'd had something like this to read in that place and time when I was so confused that I wanted to die. I have since moved on from that place, but I'm so glad that someone has written a book accessible to teens right at the age where questioning generally starts. Your books say something about what every kid questioning wants to hear. It's okay to love who you love. Thank you for giving that to so many. Hope is what everyone needs, and you have given that back to me. The Flatter Society believes it's inconceivable that a spherical ball of rock could hurtle through space at hundreds of thousands of miles per hour, could continue at the same speed, the same velocity for billions of years, when we know for a fact that space is not a vacuum. Space is filled with ether. See proof number one, pushing its way through ether all those billions of years, Earth would have had to have slowed down. It only makes sense. Earth, at some point, came to a grinding halt. Hi, my name is Sandy. I just recently read two of your books, Keeping You a Secret and Luna. I love those two books. I am neither a lesbian nor trans, but either way I believe that everyone should have the freedom to be who they want to be. And when I read those two books, I thought, wow, I need to show these to my friend. She has opposite opinions from me. And when she read your books, she came to me the next day with the books and she said, wow, I never knew how hard life could really be for people like that. 
She was touched by his books as much as I was. The more people would take the time to look into problems like that into society and read books like yours on people different from them, it wouldn't be so negative, such negative thoughts anymore. It seems to me the kind of sense we need to m knock into people's heads. Dear Miss Peters, the book you wrote, Define Normal, is my favorite book I've ever read. Growing up is tough. You don't know who you are, and all you want to do is fit in. You want to be accepted, and you're constantly changing your appearance. People are so quick to judge without even taking the time to get to know them or see things from their point of view. I think every teenage kid should read to find normal. It really helps them open up their eyes and think before they judge. It really made me feel more confident with myself. I'm glad my teacher closed, chose this book for my class to read. Sincerely, your reader. If the earth was spinning during the day when things were facing the sun on the inside orbit, buildings would be crushed and human beings squashed like butterflies in a blender. At night, when everything would be on the outside of earth, trees and buildings would be ripped from the ground and flung into outer space. On a spinning earth, on a round earth, Human beings wouldn't stand a chance. Dear Julie, I read your book, Keeping You a Secret, and I am in love with it. I don't know how to describe what I'm feeling, but I feel a connection to Holland, the main character, and this book. I am 13, and I've never really felt the butterflies toward guys. I always thought that I was just numb inside. But after reading this book, I opened my eyes and I realized that maybe I just don't like guys. Yet, it's all so confusing. Thank you for opening my eyes to a world that I'd never believed was there. Love, Jamie. It's amazing to me how one author and a few books can truly influence a person's life. I loved keeping you a secret because I'm currently struggling with my own sexuality and it didn't make me feel so alone in the world. I'm sick of all the silly romantic novels out there about princes and princesses and they always live happily ever after. Granted, I love a happy story but life isn't always like that. After finishing your book, I just wanted to yell, you dumb straight people, <laughs> and get it over with. Although as good as that would feel, I would have been locked up and taken away. So I resisted. I guess to me, you write about true love and what it's like to be different. People tell me all the time I'm weird and that I'm not normal. Even before I read your book, I asked them to define normal. Maybe I'm the normal one and all of them are the psycho weird ones. I don't expect you to write me back, but I just wanted to let you know that your books really give me hope in life. The Flat Earthers take particular issue with the Rounders, who stated equivocally that the Earth orbits the Sun the circumference of which is approximately four and a half million kilometers. How can the rounders know this? Seriously. If it was true, the Earth would be an accelerating object in circular motion, much like a car in a commercial, squealing around corners. 
loose objects, cell phones, fast food cartons, books, passengers would not only slide around but be thrown out of the car. It's centrifugal force, people. We wouldn't be standing on the earth. Dear Miss Julianne Peters, the first time I read Luna, the first book of yours that I read, I was homeless, barely surviving day to day, scouring the streets of downtown Denver for food lines and warm places to stay until St. Francis Center opened. These warm places were usually bookstores. I have an unnatural talent and passion for reading. I even used to read the cereal boxes sitting at the breakfast table. And one night, I saw Luna on a display table at tattered cover. Curious, I picked it up and began to read. And I was hooked from chapter one. I identified so much with Liam's character, his passion for computers and programming, his intelligence, his need to express his true self, and something deep inside me, something I barely knew was there, but something that had expressed itself in me since age four, and probably earlier if I could remember more than bits and pieces of my toddler years. This something identified with Luna. That's when I realized that something was more than just a mere something. It, she was me, the true me, what would be left of me, stripped away by all the pressures society put on us to act the way we look, to fit into a specific role, to fulfill society's idea of normal. Your novels are truly inspiring. They are a beacon of hope cutting through a fog of criticism, discrimination, and judgmental words. Dear Miss Peters, keeping you a secret connected with me like no other book ever has. It was like you had been secretly watching me and decided to write about it. You have inspired me. Ever since I was 10, I wanted to be an author. And after reading your books, the desire has grown tenfold. I hope to one day be as wonderful a writer as you. Thank you again. Picture in your mind, the flat earthers tell us, a round world. There are two people on the world, one at the top of the world, the North Pole, and one at the bottom, the South Pole, antipodes. We know gravity is keeping the person on top by pull pulling him down toward the center. So if we believe in gravity, why isn't it pulling the person at the bottom down as well? Why isn't he falling off the earth? But polarity is not a force of gravity as much as human nature. This past Saturday, my mom and I were at this Christmas fair thing at a local church. When we first walked in, I noticed this ceramic white heart with a rainbow on it, about the size of my hand. It was beautiful. I wasn't sure if my mom had seen it or not, but I decided not to point it out to her, fearing she'd sigh and roll her eyes at me, as she usually does when anything When anything gay comes about, we fought about, I didn't get to come out to my mom. Somebody else did. We fought about it for weeks. We found out through some other source and it was a very sad day.
There were a lot of days that I didn't feel like doing much of anything but crying. It was really rough at first for both of us, and for a while I felt very unloved because our relationship sort of deteriorated. Anyway, my mom and I split up for a little while at the church, and I wandered around the room. I was looking so intently at all the items that I didn't notice she had come up behind me. She tapped my shoulder, then I turned around, and she said, I have a surprise for you. She then pulled out the heart I had seen earlier. She put it in my hand and said, because I love you. And she kissed my forehead. I couldn't describe how happy I was in that moment. It seemed as though the last few months hadn't happened. I've never felt as loved as I did. I knew that it meant much more to her at that moment. And I'm telling you this because I read your blog about how you always like to hear happy endings coming out of stories. I think this might be along the lines of positive progress. I hope it makes you smile. The Flat Earth Society acknowledges the property of friction. That when two surfaces are held together by any means, there will be a static frictional force. But it's localized. Sticking to the earth or moving would require you to be moving. You would have a small safe zone out of which if you wandered, you would begin to tilt, then slant, then slide completely off the face of the planet. Salutations. Discrimination infests my school. To admit that you're lesbian, gay, or bisexual is like writing, attack me on your forehead. I cried twice while reading your book, Define Normal. It reminds me so much of how it is here. Luckily, I'm not alone, because my two best friends in all the world are bi a gay. We stick together when it comes to fighting the disease of prejudice. I've shared your books with my friends, and you're our most treasured author. We're looking forward to your future books. Imagine, for the sake of argument, the flat earthers say that the person on top of the world and the one at the bottom, the antipodes, managed to stay attached. What would happen if the person on one side decided to make physical contact with the other? Since the North Polar has a difficult idea of what is up and what is down from the South Polar, when they moved, they would miss each other, pass each other. They would never find middle ground. Dear Miss Peters, so we had a global meeting today. The first thing that happened, the provost denied us a room to meet in because we don't have officers yet. Thing number two, three of our members, myself included, are on the newspaper staff. David wrote up this long article on gay relationships and the marriage amendment here in Virginia and all that jazz. It was an amazing article. It became our front page story. David got six death threats and 137 hate emails in response to the article. We all went out for lunch to decide what the fuck we're gonna do and still remain active on campus, but not end up in the hospital or dead by the end of the year. Water, 
we need it to live. It covers 75% of our planet's surface. Flat earthers know the ocean is a large pool with great sheets of ice around the edges to hold the ocean back. It's silly to believe that all those trillions of gallons of water just stick to the planet. If the earth was round and spinning, water from one side of the planet would end up entirely on the other side in a matter of days. With all this turbulence and motion, the oceans would fall down into the sky, leaving the planet dry and barren. Dear Julie, well, my name is Renee and I live over here in the New Mexico area. Once again, I'm another reader that is so compelled by your book, Keeping You a Secret. I felt every emotion the characters did, mainly Holland. I'm a lesbian who had to struggle through the whole thing about coming out. I started having girlfriends when I was 15 and my mom ended up finding out. She put me in a boarding school thinking it was a phase and that I needed uh, discipline. She put me in a boarding school and I needed discipline. After I got out, things had gotten worse. She kicked me out and at the time I had my own truck and I had to live in that for a couple of days until I found another place. I had to drop out of school because the depression of not having anybody to understand me grew too intense to keep up with and so much more drama after that. But I can proudly say that life has a way of turning on you. I'm now 18 and I have a good relationship with my mom, even though she still tries to tell me I'm not really like that. Well, I just wanted to tell you again that you have changed another person's life from reading your book. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to go out and check out more of your books. Dear Julie, you are so cool. Can you be my role model or something? I just finished your book, Keeping You a Secret, and after reading part of your website, I declare myself one of your biggest, awesomest, most obnoxious and loving fans, BD. I just finished, I just got really, really absorbed in it, and it's kind of tough to forget that it isn't real. It was kind of awesome, actually. Your book was in my school library, right? And I was all chicken to look up lesbian at the computer screen station because I'm afraid someone will see me from behind and I'll explode or something epic in a bad way like that. So eventually I just stopped searching and roamed the shelves. And coincidences love me because I randomly pulled that book off the shelf because I so awesomely spotted the picture and was like, is that a girl cuddling with someone wearing lipstick, possibly another girl? <laughs> and this read was clearly meant to be. I mean, seriously. And then you're such an awesome author and you just have an email up there and it seems so easy to contact you and oh my gosh. <laughs> when I first started reading, I hid the cover towards the middle and at the end of it I walked with the cover high and showing and I was kind of ashamed being ashamed especially because I'm the GSA president of my school <laughs> I'm totally going to recommend this book to all of the members unless I accidentally lose it in my room and keep it forever accidentally and by accident <laughs> oh my gosh I'm sorry I'm rambling and I know I'm supposed to be a loving obnoxious awesome big fan but I don't want to scare you away yet. Can we be friends or is that not possible? Oh, I just think it's so cool. You seem like you would be the most epic friend ever. P.S. I'm gay and I write and I read a little and you're so cool. Okay, bye. <sighs> Far from Xanadu, tear. Oh, I'm freaking out here. So Mike just got back from taking Jamie to Shane and she decided to tell Xanadu how she feels and then stupid Bailey gets in the way and ruins it and 
oh, I can't even finish this book because it's freaking Xanadu and Mike don't get together. Or if Xanadu freaks out and isn't friends with Mike anymore, I'm going to be scarred for life. I hate this book so much. <laughs> but I hate it in that, oh my God, I'm way too emotionally involved in this book. And I don't think it's healthy kind of way. I'm seriously scared to read the rest of it. And if it ends badly, I'm suing you for my therapy bills. <laughs> This is too much pressure. I've never been the type to skip to the last page of a book, but this goddamn book. <laughs> and just for the record, if this book wasn't so horrible, it didn't make me want to curl up in a ball and die so far, it would be one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> Depending on the ending, it could take Keeping You a Secret Spot as my favorite book. But really though, I don't want to think I can't read the rest of this book. <gasps> Without evidence to the contrary, specifically acknowledged evidence, belief suffices. Faith is a stubborn mother. When shown the first NASA photographs of Earth from deep space, flat earthers' response was, well, sure, it's easy to see how a photograph like that could fool the untrained eye. For God's sake, you can Photoshop anything. Nine years later, I just want to say thank you. You may not know it, but whatever my, my life, whenever my life was at a low or a high or anywhere in between, your book helped me keep going. Whenever I help a young LGBT kid when I worked at the Memphis Gay and Lesbian Community Center. I recommended your books. I even bought copies for their library. I know that throughout the years, you have helped so many lives, whether you know it or not. But I just want to thank you for helping mine. You truly are an inspiration. Julie, I'd been putting off finishing to find normal but today it hooked me, and I read the last 170 pages of it, and I really did like it a lot. It inspired me. When I read your homepage, that you knew that by writing books, dealing with gays, for young readers, you were climbing out on a limb, that proves that you're an excellent person. I was afraid to write this letter, but my friend told me, if you really idolize this person, then let them know. So I did. I'm writing this 10 minutes after I finished your book because the last time I wanted to write to an author, she had apparently been dead for 10 years. It was a little funny, but still sad. Your $10 includes four issues of the Flat Earth News, a membership card, and each issue contains further proofs of the fact that Earth is flat. People of goodwill who seek the truth, also known as the facts, are welcome. The Flat Earth Society does not want members who are stupid, mindless, brute beasts with two feet whose only aim is to scoff or in some way harm their work. Facts, logic, reason, sanity, also known as common sense, is their aim. In fact, you must fill out this membership survey before you can join. Flat Earth Society membership survey. Name, address, email address, phone number, city, zip code, country, favorite color, Favorite radioactive isotope, favorite mineral, favorite Eastern European nation, favorite presidential cabinet member. In a short, well-organized essay, please list your reasons for wanting to join the Flat Earth Society. I support with ferocity, with ferocity our freedom to think and believe and organize and assemble and teach and welcome others into our fold. 
Even if I had ten bucks to blow, I don't think I'd be giving it to the Flat Earth Society. My rational reasoning mind derails their concepts too many times over. I can't reconcile what I know and what I see as proof in the letters I receive from readers. The world is as small or as large, as flat or as round as we allow it to be, in our minds and in our hearts. I believe in people and books, in the transformative powers of each, in how vital books can be to our emotional health, intellectual growth and inner peace. Beyond education or entertainment, literature provides solace, friendship, self-affirmation, validation, and hope. I believe in the natural laws of infinite imagination and unharnessed potential. I believe in young people's passion for living, learning, and loving, for making the world a better place. And I hope all of you who dedicate your lives to young people, who work so tirelessly to open the world of books to them, have heard how important you are. So I'm going to invest in loving for making the world a better place. And I hope all of you who dedicate your lives to young people, who work so tirelessly to open the world of books to them, have heard how important you are. So I'm going to invest my seed money in you and them. Thank you.